Hi everybody and welcome to another video on MooLab. In this video I want to show you how to create, edit, and manage your sequences. Now first of all, what is a sequence? Well, I've got a few here already that I've created. A sequence is a clip or a container that has information in it, usually MIDI data, that plays in time. So here is an example. I've got a kick drum and if I open it up here, you'll see it. it's just two notes. There's that kick drum. Now to create a looped sequence in the piano roll editor, you can just click and drag up here and select the beginning and end of that loop. So when I come back out here, you'll see that this loops. Now there's a couple of ways that you can create a new MIDI clip or sequence. If you, um, I've just moved this over here so you can see this. If you have the loop regions set here and you double click in the blank track area, it will create a new sequence with the length of the loop markers. So now I, I have a, a four bar or four measure sequence. And if I double click that, you can see here, one, two, three, so likewise, if I sent this out to eight bars, let's get rid of that one, and double click, it's created an eight bar sequence. Now I've just created two new sequences by double clicking. And over in the browser, you can see all of the sequences in your composition. I've created these just generic uh, clips and they're indicated over here in the browser. I'm, I'm looking in the sequences right now. And you can see sequence one, sequence two. And you can manage these uh, sequences in here. Even if I get rid of them on the timeline or in the arrange view, you'll see that I can still pull them up and just drop them back in here, which is pretty awesome. So I could have several kick patterns and just uh, drag and drop them into my composition wherever I wanted them even if I delete this one. So this is the one I want, but I can get rid of it from the timeline. I still have it over here, kick Electro 1, and I can preview it right here in this window as well. So I just drag it back over into my Arrange page and drag out my loop point. So this browser really gives you a lot of ability to uh, manage your sequences. You can also right click and rename them from this, from this view. You can delete them. So sequence one, sequence two. I don't want these. Just right click and delete. That easy. Now what about MIDI files? Yes, you can import MIDI files into MooLab. Let me pull up Finder. I've got one pre-prepared here and uh, I've got a track set up for it. I've used a, a bass preset, the Fat Bass Poly 6, and it sounds like this. So I like the sound and I want to have some notes on here. So rather than double clicking in the blank space, there's another way that you can do this. Say you don't want a four bar or you, your loop markers aren't in the view that you want to create the clip. You can hold down command and you get this little pencil icon. And from here you can create a new sequence like so. But in this case, I want some MIDI. So let's grab a MIDI file and just drag it right here onto our blank arrange area. And there we go. Now we can line it up. And you'll see here that uh, I've also created this sequence in MooLab and exported it as a MIDI file. And what it does is it just cuts off at the last bit of information available. So you see there it was just right at the end of this last note um, in this sequence. So if I double click in here, you'll see that now it's actually going to the full four, fourth measure here. And if I want this to be a looping sequence, I can just go up in here, drag across this bar to set my loop points and close out of there. Now I have a looping sequence. So let's just hear that bass part. Now 
Great. But it's got this sort of generic name. It's just called sequence. If I'm looking over here in the browser, that doesn't really tell me what it is. So with it selected, which will be indicated by this darker bar and kind of the colors being highlighted, if you hit the return key, you get this explicit sequence name dialog box, and I can give it a name here. Maybe I'll call it chord base. And just hit enter. And now my sequence is named not only in my arrange page, but also in my sequence browser window. For now, I'm just going to hide the browser window and show you another way that you can do this. Say you've just created a clip. I'll create a new sequence here. Double click it. Up here it just says sequence. And maybe I'm just putting in some notes. And at some point I decide, oh, I should probably name this. Which is a good idea to stay tidy and keep things organized. You can just hit return on here as well, in this window, and give it a new name. I'll call it chord base 2. Now I didn't put any notes in there, but I've got a sequence ready for MIDI information, and it will be a, a, a new pattern. If I go back to my browser window and show the sequences again, now I have chord base and chord base 2 also available there. I'm going to delete chord base 2 from here. Now what if I just wanted to make a few changes in my sequence to give some variation throughout the arrangement? Well, if you hold down, if you, if you just copy and paste, this is going to give you a referenced copy. You'll see there's a little link icon right in front of the name here. And what that means is it's referencing the original sequence. Look over here in the browser window again. There's no new sequence here, just chord base. So this is going to be an identical copy of the original, meaning whichever one I make edits on will also affect the other. Let me show you. If I double click on this chord base and say these four notes, I'll just take up an octave. There. And I look back over on the original one. This also has been moved up an octave. So these are referencing each other. They're identical copies. So if I want to give variation to a new part, I could either right click and say, make unique sequence. Choosing that option removes the link icon and gives it chord base and in parentheses a little two. Now in my browser window I've got chord base one and chord base two. So these are unique sequences but I'm starting with the same pattern that I had before and I'm able to make small changes if I want to just give it some variation like so. Great. Another way that you can do this is just by command dragging your sequence. Now I've got chord base 3. What if I want to just make an identical copy by, by just drag and drop? Hold command and shift and that will create the linked duplicate or reference copy. See there's the link icon again. So there's some tips on how sequences work inside of Moolab. Now let's talk about some sound stuff. I like this bass. But if you look down here in, in the rack where you see the meters, you'll see that there's a lot of stereo uh, image. There's a lot of width in this bass part, which usually is not necessarily the best thing, the best thing for, a, for a bass frequency instrument. You want to have it more in the center, which I have for my kick and my snare. 
look again at the meters here. See the left and right? There's a lot of difference. Kind of jumping around almost like it's got an auto panner on it. That's because there's a lot of chorus on this particular bass patch. But rather than going into the Poly 6 modular editor and pulling up the, the individual parts of this uh, patch or changing any uh, oscillator settings or any of that, this is a very unique feature that I've uh, realized MooLab has just by default. There's a stereo width knob right next to the pan knob. Now what does that do? Well, you've got a left and a right channel in your stereo mix. And the stereo width knob will tell whatever is coming out of this rack how much of that left and right channel to use. So if I bring it all the way down, it's putting that right in the center. So now if you're listening in, in stereo or on, fit, on headphones, uh, you'll really be able to tell now that's just right in the center. There's not that stereo movement happening at all now. And look at the meters. As I bring it up, you can hear and see the change. So I like some of that chorus effect, but it's a little bit heavy on a bass part here. So I'm just going to bring it down to about 50. So without having to use a third-party plugin for managing my stereo field, I can just get rid of some of the stereo width of this particular bass patch sound just using that stereo width knob, which I think is fantastic. So if you happen to have a kick drum that's recorded in stereo and you just want to make sure it's right in the middle, just take all of that stereo width out by just dragging that knob to zero. Now, this will not add any more stereo width than whatever the source material already has in it. So say you've got uh, some hi-hats or a full stereo recording of a drum set. By default, this is going to be at 100% and it's not going to add any more stereo width. Likewise, if you have a mono signal, of course, this cannot add more stereo width to that signal. You'd have to use something like a chorus or a delay effect or some kind of stereo imaging uh, plugin to add that, but it's nice to just be able to drop some of that out in this case. Now let's hear how it sounds together. Great. For more tips on MooLab, make sure you subscribe Thanks for watching and I hope to show you more tips in videos to come.